Hi, welcome to the first ever Popular Stand virtual quiz. Um, with no Rovers fixtures at present due to uh, coronavirus and with, with most of us um, either in or, or teetering on the edge of a tier four lockdown, um, I've put together this online quiz to, to help you pass the time, you know, help you uh, find a distraction while well, there's, there's not much going on Rovers wise. Um, so the subject is Rovers in the 21st century and there are 50 questions in total across eight rounds. So how it works is I'll read uh, each question twice. If you want a bit more time to answer, you know, you can you can pause the video um, and I'll read out the answers at the end of each round. Um, you can tackle it individually or, or maybe with friends remotely uh, by sharing your screen in a, in, a, in a Zoom link up or, you know, however you've been, been staying in touch since... Um, well, March, uh, really. I mean, you can figure that out. I'm, I'm not tech support. I'm just the, the guy who's written the questions. Um, anyway, so grab yourself a pen and paper, uh, settle in. Feel free to pause me here whilst you, you find said pen and paper. You got it? Good. Okay. Um, so no cheating, no Googling, you know, it's just for fun. There's no, no prizes on offer because we're popular stand. We don't do that kind of shit. Um, so yeah, quiet in the bar. You know, stop, stop rustling your crisps around. No conferring, unless you're doing it in teams. But I, we're that out. Um, so where we go? So we're going to start with round one. Um, forgive me while I scroll down in front of your faces. And round one is on 2000 to 2005. Five questions, nine points on offer. Um, and question, well, question one is probably the hardest question in the whole quiz. So, so don't be put off by this. Stay with it. All right. Uh, question one then, who scored the first Doncaster Rovers goal of the 21st century? Question one again, who scored the first Doncaster Rovers goal of the 21st century? As I say, feel free to pause after each question so you've got a bit more time to answer. It's up to you. Uh, question two, which team did Rovers beat 2-1 in May 2001 to win the Sheffield Hampshire Senior Cup? for the first time since 1912. And question two again. Which team did Rovers beat 2-1 in May 2001 to win the Sheffield and Hampshire Senior Cup for the first time since 1912? Question three. Who were the opponents when John Ryan made his solitary uh, Rovers appearance in the final league game of the 2002-03 season? Question three again. Who were the opponents when John Ryan made his solitary appearance for Rovers in the final league game of the 2002-03 season? Uh, question four. So not counting penalty shootouts, Rovers scored five goals in the 2003 conference playoffs. Which five players scored them? Five goals, five different goal scorers. So not counting penalty shootouts, Rovers scored five goals in the 2003 conference playoffs. Which five players scored those goals? And question five, last one for this round. Which team did Rovers beat 2-0 at Bellevue to secure the 2003-04 third division title? So question five, which team did Rovers beat 2-0 at Bellevue to secure the 2003-04 third division title. So there you go, that's all the questions in round one. I'm gonna give you the answers to those questions now as well before we move on to round two. Okay, answers to round one. Uh, first Doncaster Rovers goal scorer in the 21st century was Glenn Kirkwood, scored in a 1-0 win against Sutton on the 8th of January 2020. Answer to question two, the team Rovers beat 2-1 in the uh, in May 2001 to the Sheffield Hampshire Senior Cup was Emily. Was that uh, Hillsborough? Question three, the opponents for John Ryan's appearance for Rovers were Hereford United. And uh, question four, not counting penalty shootouts, the five Rovers goal scorers in the 2003 conference playoffs were Tristan Whitman in the semi final first leg, Paul Barnes, semi final second leg, and then of course the three scorers in the final Dave Morley, Paul Green, and Francis Tierney. You get a point for each one of those you get right. Uh, so, a maximum of five points for that question. I mean, you, you'll work that out. 
Um, and question five, which team did Rovers beat 2-0 at Bellevue to secure the uh, 2003-04 third division title? It was, of course, uh, Cambridge United. So there you go. That's the answers for round one. OK, time for round two. Um, five questions again in round two. Six points on offer. Um, and the subject of round two is James Coppinger. Of course, you had to give a whole round dedicated to that man. Um, don't forget, all the answers, every question is Rovers in the 21st century. So, question six to start us off. Against which two sides has James Coppinger scored hat-tricks for Doncaster Rovers? Question six again. Against which two sides has James Coppinger scored hat-tricks for Doncaster Rovers? Question seven. Against which team did Cops make his Rovers debut? Seven again. Against which team did Cops make his Rovers debut? Question eight. What's the highest number of goals that James Coppinger has scored in a single Rovers season? So question eight. What's the highest number of goals that Coppinger has scored in a single Rovers season? Okay. Question nine. So James Coppinger has played alongside over 250 different teammates whilst at Rovers. In front of which goalkeeper has he played the most of his Doncaster games? So of the 250 different teammates that James Coppinger has played with at Rovers, which goalkeeper has he played with the most times? That's question nine. And on a similar vein, question 10. Uh, with which outfield player has Coppinger lined up alongside the most times whilst at Doncaster Rovers? So question 10 again. Which outfield player has Coppinger lined up, again, uh, lined up alongside, <laughs> lined up alongside, that's crucial, uh, the most times whilst at Rovers? Okay, so you might want to pause it there. Uh, give yourself a bit more time on those questions. OK, time now for the answers to round two. As I said, five questions, six points and off. It's the first question where there's two points to, uh, to gain. The two sides that Coppinger has scored hat-tricks uh, for Doncaster Rovers are Southend United, playoffs of course, and Norwich City. So you get a point for each of those. The team Coppinger made his Rovers debut against was Bradford City. That's the answer to question seven, Bradford City. Question eight, the highest number of goals Cops has scored in a single Rovers season is 10. That was the 2016-17 uh, season. Uh, question nine, of all the players that uh, James Coppinger has played with at Doncaster Rovers, the goalkeeper that he's played the most matches with is Neil Sullivan. They've played 180 matches together. Or they did play, I can't see them playing anymore. And question 10, the outfield player that Coppinger has lined up with the most times whilst at Rovers is James O'Connor. The two of them have played 198 matches together. OK, round three now. Uh, subject of round three is the years 2006 to 2010. Five questions again, seven points on offer in total this time. So let's start with question 11. Uh, it's well known that Theo Street scored the final goal at Bellevue, but which Rovers player scored the penultimate goal at the ground? To question 11 again. It's well known that Theo Street scored the final goal at Bellevue, but which Rovers player scored the penultimate goal at the Bellevue ground? Question 12. Who was the first Rovers player to be sent off at the Keepmo Stadium? 12 again. Who was the first player to be sent off at the Keepmo Stadium? Question 13. In 2007, 
Rovers won the Johnston's Paint Trophy final at the Man U Stadium. Three players from the starting lineups that day went on to pick up international caps. Which three? So in 2007, Rovers won the Johnston's Paint Trophy at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Three players uh, from the starting lineups that day went on to pick up international caps. Which three? Question 14. In their first season in the Championship, Rovers were rock bottom at Christmas. But in which position did they ultimately finish? So 14 again. Uh, in the first season of the Championship, Rovers were bottom at Christmas. But in which position did they ultimately finish? And question 15, last one in this round. In the summer of 2009, Rovers received their record transfer fee for a player. Who was it for? 15 again. In two, uh, summer of 2009, Rovers received their record transfer fee for a player. But who was it for? Okay, again, you might want to pause here just for a second. Make sure you've got everything down. Time now for the answers to round three. Um, question 11, Theo Street scored the final goal of the who scored the penultimate goal. It was Paul Heffernan um, scored the second goal in FA Cup replay against Mansfield. The first Rovers player to be sent off at Keep Stadium, question 12, that was Gareth Roberts against Huddersfield Town. He's one of three players sent off that day. Question 13, the three players from the starting lineups that went on to pick up international caps, uh, starting lineup in the <laughs> Johnson's Bank Trophy final, I should say, uh, that went on to pick up international caps, are Brian Stock, played for Wales, of course, Paul Green, went on to play for Republic of Ireland, and from the Bristol Rovers side, Ricky Lambert, who went on to play for England. Um, point for each of those you got right. Question 14. Uh, Rovers were bottom at Christmas in their first season of the Championship. They eventually finished 14th. And question 15. The record transfer fee that Rovers received for a player was for Matt Mills who uh, went to Reading for a figure around £2 million. OK, that's round three. OK, settle in. Time for round four. Ten questions in this round. Ten points on offer. Long questions because this round is Who Am I? So I'm going to read out a description of a Rovers player, somebody who's played for Rovers in the 21st century, uh, you need to guess who they are. Simple as that. A lot of reading for me in this round, so I won't be looking directly at the camera much. Not that I have anyway. Um, so, okay, here we go. Uh, question 16. Born in Galway, I was signed for Doncaster Rovers in 2000 by Ian Snodden. I made just over 40 appearances for the club and later played for Coventry City and Brighton, but I spent the bulk of my career in the Republic of Ireland. Who am I? So 16 again. Born in Galway, I was signed for Doncaster Rovers in 2000 by Ian Snodden. I made just over 40 appearances for the club and later played for Coventry City and Brighton. But I spent the bulk of my career in Ireland. Who am I? OK, question 17. Born on Merseyside in 1975, I would have joined Liverpool in 1993 but for a failed medical Instead, I spent five years at Crewe and later joined Rovers from Exeter City. I became a cult hero at Bellevue, but my career was ultimately cut short by injury. 17 again. Born on Merseyside in 1975, I would have joined Liverpool in 1993, but for a failed medical. Instead, I spent five years at Crewe and later joined Rovers from Exeter City. I became a cult hero at Bellevue, but my career was ultimately cut short by injury. Who am I? Okay, question 18. Signed from Stocksbridge Park Steels for £12,000. I went on to play for Rovers in three different divisions, but in 170 appearances of the club, I never once scored a goal. So 18 again. 
signed from Stocksbridge Park Steels for £12,000. I went on to play for Rovers in three different divisions, but in 170 appearances for the club and never once scored a goal. Who am I? Question 19. Born in Liverpool, I joined Rovers in February 2004, having previously been let go by Barnsley. I played over 80 games for the club and was known for being pretty handy at free kicks. I left Bellevue in 2006 and was an unused substitute at the 2010 World Cup Finals. So 19 again. Born in Liverpool, I joined Rovers in February 2004, having previously been let go by Barnsley. I played over 80 games for Rovers and was known for being pretty handy at free kicks. I left Bellevue in 2006 and was an unused substitute at the 2010 World Cup Finals. Who am I? Okay. Number 20. Uh, born in 1983, I began my career at Arsenal, but wouldn't taste first-team football until I joined Bournemouth. I signed for Rovers from Burnley in 2008 and went on to make 50 league appearances for the club across two seasons in the Championship. 20 again. Born in 1983, I began my career at Arsenal, but wouldn't taste first-team football until joining Bournemouth. I signed for Rovers from Burnley in 2008 and went on to make 50 league appearances for the club across two seasons in the Championship. Who am I? 21. Doncaster Rovers were my first professional club when I signed in 2009, having previously played non-league football in and around London. Uh, since leaving Rovers, I've played for clubs in England, Scotland and the USA, and I've picked up 12 caps for my country. 21 again. Doncaster Rovers were my first professional club when I signed in 2009, having previously played non-league football in and around London. Since leaving Rovers, I've played for clubs in England, Scotland and the USA and I've picked up 12 caps for my country. That's a lot of speaking in this round. Okay, question 22. I began my career at Stoke, but I'm perhaps best known for my six year spell at Newcastle, where I played alongside Coppinger briefly. Having also played for Derby and Reading, I joined Rovers in 2012, featuring 16 times for the club in what would be my last season in the Football League. So 22 again. I began my career at Stoke, but I'm perhaps best known for my six year spell at Newcastle, where I briefly played alongside James Coppinger. Having also played for Derby and Reading, I joined Rovers in 2012, featuring 16 times for the club in what would be my last season playing in the Football League. Who am I? Number 23. Born in 1981, I was just 17 years old when I made my Premier League debut for West Ham. After eight years at Upton Park, I went on to play for Derby, Sheffield Wednesday and Millwall before joining Rovers in 2015. After a spell in India, I finished my career just last year playing in League One. So, number 23 again. Born in 1981, I was just 17 years old when I made my Premier League debut for West Ham. After eight years at Upton Park, I went on to play for Derby, Sheffield Wednesday and Millwall before joining Rovers in 2015. After a spell in India, I finished my career just last year playing in League One. Who am I? Question 24. Born in 1998, I spent the 2017-18 season on loan at Rovers from a Premier League club. No longer in England, I'm back playing in the top flight of the country I have represented at all levels from under 16s to under 20s. So 24 again. Born in 1998, I spent the 2017-18 season on loan at Rovers from a Premier League club. Uh, no longer in England, I am now back playing in the top flight of the country I have represented at all levels from under 16s to under 20s. And question 25, the last one for this round. Signed by Grant McCann, having made over 200 appearances for my previous club, I scored three goals for Rovers in my one full season. I left on a free transfer in September 2019 and I'm now playing in League Two. So 25 again. 
Signed by Grant McCann, having made over 200 appearances for my previous club, I scored three goals for Rovers in my one full season at the Keemo, but I left on a free transfer in September 2019 and I'm now playing in League Two. Who am I? So there we go. That's the 10 questions in the Who Am I round, round four. Time now for the answers. So, number six, uh, question 16, the player born in Galway and signed by Doncaster Rovers was Colin Hawkins. Question 17, hopefully you've you all got this one. Uh, player born on Merseyside 1975, had a trial at Liverpool, chemical here at Bellevue was Sir Francis Tierney. If you've left the Sir off, you can still have a point. Um, 18, signed from Park Steels for 12 grand, never scored for overs in 170 appearances, that was Simon Marples. Question 19, player born in Liverpool, Joined Rovers after being let go by Barnsley and was an unused sub at the 2010 World Cup Finals. That was David Mulligan. Question 20. The player born in 83 began at Arsenal and joined Rovers from Burnley, making 50 appearances in the Championship, was John Spicer. Um, 21. The player for who Rovers were his first professional club after uh, non-league in, in London. He went on to pick up 12 caps for his country. That country was Sierra Leone because it was Mustafa Dumbaya. Uh, 22, the player who began his career at Stoke and briefly played alongside Coppinger at Newcastle. Uh, that was Andy Griffin. Question 23, the player born in 1981 who made his debut for West Ham, age 17 in the Premier League, uh, joined Rovers in 2015. That was Stephen Bywater. Uh, question 24, the player who spent 2017-18 on loan at Rovers from Premier League club He's now about playing in the top flight of a country he's uh, represented internationally. And that's Rodney Congolo, who's now playing for Heerenveen in the Netherlands. And answer to number 25, the player uh, signed by Grant McCann after making over 200 appearances for his previous club. Uh, that club was Hamilton and the player was Ali Crawford. <laughs> Time for round five. Uh, five questions, five points on offer, nice and straightforward. These questions are on the years 2011 to 2015. Okay, so start with question 26. In April 2011, whose goal in a one-all draw with Leicester at the Keepmote Stadium helped secure Rovers' fourth season of Championship football? question again 26 in april 2011 whose goal in a one-all draw with leicester city at the keep stadium helped secure 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 uh, a fourth season of championship football for rovers okay question 27 which of the following players brought in as part of william mckay's experiment in 2011-12 made the most appearances for rovers was it Lamine Diatta, Harold Goulon, Frederic Piquion, or Habib Bomogo? So which of these four players who were brought in as part of Willie Mackay's experiment in 2011-12 made the most appearances for Rovers? Was it Lamine Diatta, Harold Goulon, Frederic Piquion, or Habib Bomogo? Okay, question 28. Uh, who was Rovers' top scorer in the 2012-13 promotion season? So 28, who was Rovers' top scorer in the 2012-13 promotion season? Uh, 29, which player saw what would have been only his second ever professional goal chalked off after Rovers' August 2013 match away at Charlton was abandoned at half-time? So that question again, 29. Which player saw what had only been his second ever professional goal chalked off after Ravers' August 2013 match away at Charlton was abandoned at half time? Uh, question 30, last one in this round. In February 2015, five different Ravers players got on the score sheet as Ravers won 5 0 in League One away at which club? So in February 2015, 
five different Rovers players got on the score sheet as Rovers won 5 0 in a League One match away at which club? There you go. Give yourself another minute. Pause here if you need to. I'll give you now the answers to round five. Uh, so question 26, the player whose goal in a 1-1 draw at Leicester secured a fourth season of championship football, that was of course Steve Brooker. Um, 27, uh, the player of the four who made the most appearances for Rovers was Frederick Piquion. He made eight appearances for Rovers. The others, Howard Goulon made six, uh, Habib Bamogo four, and Lamin Diata did not play at all. Um, 28, the Rovers' top scorer in the 2012-13's promotion season was Billy Painter. Um, on to question 29, the player who uh, saw what would have only been his second ever professional goal chalked off when the match at Charlton was abandoned was Paul Keegan. He'd scored first uh, in a, what was 3-1 half-time lead for us. Unfortunately for Keegan, he also got sent off in the half and he's sending off stud. His goal didn't, so uh, really painful <laughs> memories, I'm sure, for Paul Keegan from that one. And question 30, five different Rovers players got on the score sheet when Rovers won 5-0 away at Crawley Town. Uh, Andy Butler, Richie Wellens, Nathan Tyson, Harry Forrester and Curtis Main, the scorers, but Crawley Town was your answer. <laughs> Okay, time for round six. Uh, this round is all about cup matches, different cup matches Rovers have played in the 21st century. Ten questions in this round, 13 points on offer. Okay, so we start with question 31. So the 2003 conference playoff final wasn't Rovers' first experience of a golden goal. Um, which football league side did Rovers knock out the LDV Vans trophy with a Neil Campbell golden goal in the year 2000? So question 31 again. The, um, the conference player final in 2003, that wasn't Rovers' first experience of a golden goal winner. Which football league side did Rovers knock out of the LDV Vans trophy with a golden goal scored by Neil Campbell in 2000? Question 32, against which team did Rovers lose 5-4 in a 2001-2 FA Trophy replay? So question 32, against which team did Rovers lose 5-4 in a 2001-2 FA Trophy replay? Um, question 33, the last time a non-league side defeated Rovers in an FA Cup tie was 2004. Which team was it? So the last time a non-league side defeated Rovers in an FA Cup tie was 2004. Which team was it? On to question 34. Rovers League Cup run of 2005-06 famously included wins over Manchester City, Aston Villa. But which other two sides did Rovers knock out of the competition? 34 again. Rovers League Cup uh, run of 25-06 um, famously included wins over Manchester City and Aston Villa. But which other two sides did Rovers knock out of the competition that season? Question 35. The longest penalty shootout Rovers have ever been involved in happened during the 2006-07 League Cup. Who did Rovers defeat 8-7 at Bellevue? Again, that the longest penalty shootout Rovers have ever been involved in happened during the 2006-07 League Cup. Who did Rovers defeat 8-7 at Bellevue? Question 36. Uh, which non-league club did Rovers suffer an FA Cup first round postponement just minutes before kickoff? Question 36. At which non league club did Rovers suffer an FA Cup first round postponement just minutes before kickoff? Question 37. The 2018 19 season brought Rovers best ever FA Cup performance, but how many goals did the team score in total in their run to the fifth round? 
So the 2018-19 season brought Rovers' best ever FA Cup performance, but how many goals did the team score in total in that run to the fifth round? Um, question 38. Which two teams uh, have knocked Rovers out of both the League Cup and the FA Cup since the year 2000? So yeah, again, so there are two teams that can claim to have knocked Rovers out of both the League Cup and the FA Cup since the year 2000. Which two teams are they? Question 39. Which two current Premier League sides have Rovers taken to FA Cup replays in the 21st century? 39. Which two current Premier League teams have Rovers taken to FA Cup replays in the 21st century? And question 40. Um, since 2000, how many cup matches have Rovers played against Oldham Athletic? So, since 2000, how many cup matches have Rovers played against Oldham Athletic? So, how many games in total across all cup competitions? Not, not how many it feels like, but how many it actually is. Okay. Let's give you the answers now then for round six, the cup round. So, question 31. Um, the golden goal that Rose had experienced before the conference playoff final was in the LDV Vans Trophy. It came courtesy of Neil Campbell. And the team that Rovers knocked out were Rochdale. 3-2 win at Bellevue. Um, question 32. The team Rovers lost 5-4-2 in the FA Trophy was Yeovil. Question 33. The last time an on-league side defeated Rovers in the FA Cup was 2004 and it was Scarborough who beat Rovers. Um, but frustratingly, they went on to draw, draw Chelsea in the next round, as you might remember. Um, question 34. Rovers' League Cup run, 2005-06, famously included wins over Manchester City and Villa. The other two teams Rovers beat in the Cup that season were Wrexham and Gillingham. So you get a point for each of those. Uh, Rovers' longest ever penalty shootout saw them win 8-7 at Bellevue against Derby County. So answer to 35 is Derby County. Number 36, the non-league side that Rovers uh, suffered a last-minute postponement against just before kickoff was Western Supermare in 2014. Question 37, the total number of goals Rovers scored um, in the 2018-19 FA Cup run was 16. So there's nine against Chorley, 2-2 two -two draw and a 7-0 win. Uh, two against Charlton, three against Preston and two against Oldham, so 16 in total. Um, question 38, the two teams that have knocked Rovers out of both the League Cup and the FA Cup since the year 2000 are Crystal Palace, League Cup in 2004, FA Cup in 2019, and Notts County, League Cup in 2009, FA Cup in 2012. So you get a point for each of those. Well done if you got both. Um, question 39. The two current Premier League teams that Rovers have taken to FA Cup replays in the 21st century are Aston Villa in 2008-9 and Wolves in 2010-11. So again, point for each. And question 40. Since the year 2000, Rovers have played against Oldham Athletic in Cup matches seven times seven is the right answer six fa cup matches and one efl trophy game okay time now for round seven uh five questions six points on offer these questions all concern the years 2016 to 2020 okay so question 41 on the 2nd of January 2016, Rovers convincingly beat Southend United 3-0 at Roots Hall, a performance that some had some fans talking of a playoff push. How many league games did Rovers then go before their next victory? So, question 41 again. On the 2nd of January 2016, Rovers convincingly beat Southend United 3-0 at Roots Hall, a, a performance that was so good it had some fans talking of a playoff push 
How many league games did Rovers then go before their next victory? League games, that is. Question 42. Uh, John Marquis was far and away Rovers' top scorer in the 2016-17 League 2 winning season. Um, but which midfielder finished that campaign as the club's second highest scorer? Let's do 42 again. John Marcus was far and away Rovers' top scorer in the 2016-2017 season when Rovers were promoted from League 2. But which midfielder finished that campaign as the club's second highest scorer? Question 43. On their return to League 1, Rovers' first win of the 2017-18 season came away at which former Premier League team? Um, question 43. On their return to League One, Rovers' first win of the 2017-18 season came away at which former Premier League team? 44. A 2-0 win over which team on the final day of the 2018-19 season secured Rovers' place in the League One playoffs? Question 44 again. A 2-0 win over which team on the final game of the 2018-19 season secured Rovers' place in the League One playoffs? And question 45, last one for this round. In 2019-20, Rovers were only awarded one penalty all season. Thankfully it was scored. Who scored it and who was it against? So in 2019-20, Rovers were only awarded a single penalty all season. Thankfully it was scored. Um, but who scored it and who was it against? Okay, you're in. But you feel free to pause there to give yourself more time. But I'll give you now the answers to round seven. Uh, question 41. After Rovers beat Southend United 3 0 um, on the 2nd of January, and certain fanzine editors were talking about a playoff push, um, Rovers went 16 Matt League games uh, before the next fixture. 16 League games, four draws, and 12 defeats. Okay, they also lost in the FA Cup to Stoke, but it was league games you wanted specifically. Question 42. John Marcus was Rovers' top scorer in 2016-2017 when he came up out of League 2. The midfielder who was the club's second highest scorer that season was Tommy Rowe, 13 goals. Question 43. Uh, Rovers' first win of the 2017-18 season came away at Blackburn Rovers. Uh, question 44. The team that Rovers beat 2-0 to secure their place in the 2018-19 playoffs was Coventry City. And question 45, the one solitary penalty that Rovers were awarded in 2019-20 came against Rotherham United and it was scored by Ben Whiteman. So you have a point for each, Whiteman and Rotherham. Okay, one more round to go. Okay, round eight, final rounds, general knowledge. Don't forget, we're only dealing with the 21st century. Five questions this round, 14 points on offer, triple your money time, well, almost triple your money time. That's another strong point. Anyway, let's rock on, shall we? Question 46, which of the following players has not finished a season as Rovers' top goal scorer this millennium? Dino Marmria, Andy Williams, Curtis Main or Jason Price? So again, of these four players, which one has not finished a season as Rovers' top goalscorer this millennium? Dino Marmria, Andy Williams, Curtis Main, Jason Price. Question 47. Rovers have played in the first competitive fixture at three new grounds in the 21st century. Which three grounds? Stadiums, ground, stadium. It depends on how you are. Uh, question 47 again then. Rovers have played in the first competitive fixture at three new stadiums in the 21st century. Which three stadiums? Question 48. Which of the following has not manufactured a Rovers kit in the 21st century? Nike, Asics, Bandanel, Viking Leisure Wear. Which of the following has not manufactured a Rovers kit in the 21st century? Nike, Asics, Vandenel, Viking Leisure Wear. 
Question 49. Which Doncaster Rovers manager gave Danny Amos his Rovers debut? 49 again. Which Rovers manager gave Danny Amos his Rovers debut? And lastly, question 50. A lot of points on offer here. See how you get on. Eight players have scored hat-tricks for Doncaster Rovers in the 21st century. Who are they? So, eight players have scored hat-tricks for Rovers in the 21st century. Who are they? And I imagine you're going to probably want to pause at this point to give yourself some time to A, think of them, and B, write them down. So, assuming you've done that and you're ready, time for the last set of answers. The answers for round eight, general knowledge. Uh, question 46, the player who had not finished the season as Rovers' top scorer was Curtis Main. Uh, Mar Maria was top scorer in 1900,000. Jason Price, joint top scorer 2007-8, and Andy Williams 15-16. So Curtis Main is your answer. Uh, question 47, the three stadiums uh, in which Rovers have played in the first competitive match this, this millennium. Uh, point for each one. Amex Stadium, Brighton, Plough Lane, Wimbledon, of course, the Keepmo Stadium, um, which hopefully you have, you thought of. Um, question 48, which of the uh, following had not manufactured a Rovers kit in the 21st century? It was Asics, uh, who made the 98-99 kit, which I think I modelled at some point in this video. Um, Nike, Van Den Aal, Viking Lejuet all made Rovers kits in the 21st century. So Asics is the answer you wanted. Question 49, the Rovers manager that gave Danny Amos his, uh, his debut was Darren Ferguson back in August 2016. And question 50, the eight Rovers players to have scored hat-tricks in the 21st century, they are, in order I think, uh, Michael McIndoe against Bristol Rovers, Leo Fortune West, combined distance of nine yards against Leighton Orient, James Coppinger against Southend and Norwich. Uh, only one point for Coppinger though. Nathan Tyson against Scunthorpe. Andy Williams against Yeovil. John Marquis against Grimsby. Alfie May against Chorley. And Ben Whiteman against Southend. So there's eight players again that have scored hat-tricks. Point for each one. Michael McIndoe, Leo Fortune West, James Coppinger, Nathan Tyson, Andy Williams... John Marquis, Alfie May and Ben Whiteman. So that's your lot. Um, end of the quiz. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I wish that I hung this shirt on over there and worn the green one because the green one fits me much better than this. But aside from that, I think it's gone all right. Um, add up your total, see how you did. The maximum score you could have got uh, from the quiz is 70. Um, so if you got that, then, uh, well, you must be John Coyle, presumably. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Um, I reckon I t I mean, anything over 50 is, is a pretty impressive score. Um, anything over half, 35, will be good. Um, so well done if you achieve that. Again, doesn't matter, though. It was all for fun. A way to uh, pass some time while there's no fixtures going on. Um, if you've enjoyed this, try, try not to post any spoilers for others on uh, social media forums or, or in the comments beneath this video. You know, give everyone a fair, fair chance to have a bash. Um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. We might be back with more videos in the future. We might stick to audio for everyone's benefit. But we'll see how we go. Um, all the best for 2021. Stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll all see each other in the Keepmo Stadium soon.